Well, welcome. This is Dale Ekbaum, and I am going to talk today about laryngeal re specifically the ANSA cervicalis to recurrent laryngeal nerve option here. There are different options for re but um, it's widely recognized that this seems to be the best. So we make our uh, line, draw our line out, uh, and it's about a four to five centimeter incision lower part of the neck. Usually I'm at the level of the cricoid uh, cartilage here in case I want to do a thyroplasty, then I can move up. And uh, we go just about midline to this, and then all the way to the sternocleidomastoid. Here I'm going through platysma, and um, and then and then going through the uh, a little bit of deeper layers. We're starting to see the SCM on the left side of the incision. The head is superior there, of course, uh, so this is our raising our, our superior flap, our subletismal flap, and then our inferior subletismal flap here. You can leave some of the fat on the uh, platys as well. Basically, you're just trying to clear, clearly see the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the strap uh, and the strap muscles. It's a pretty nice view. We're kind of putting the fish hooks in place and then we uh, start start dissecting um, off of the anterior border of the SCM. And we're carefully going through the tissue below the SCM because fairly soon you'll start potentially seeing branches of uh, of the ansa cervicalis. You know, there's the anterior root of the ansa and the, post and the posterior root of the ansa cervicalis. And uh, it's really right down onto the IJ. So we're unwrapping the SCM. We're pulling the uh, strap muscles over medially and showing ourselves um, the omohyoid muscle uh, next, clearly there, you see. And pretty soon you'll start seeing uh, fibers of ANSA. We take the um, uh, uh, Army Navy retractor here and lift up the omohyoid and the SCM together, and then you start seeing these branches going up to the straps. Here's a clear view of the ANSA cervicalis. A lot of times it's along the lateral border of one of the strap muscles, often the sternohyoid or sternohyoid complex. There's a couple branches you're seeing there. And then the IJ, internal jugular, is below. These nerves are, are easier to find than you think, uh, especially in an unoperated neck. But even in uh, a necks that have had a, a, thyro a thyroidectomy done without extensive uh, neck dissection, you can clearly find the ansa cervicalis. If for some reason it has been uh, transected on that side, you can go to the contralateral side and use an ANSA branch from that side and swing it over. We're cutting some of the extra horizontal branches here. Um, you try not to cut the loop. That was not the loop itself. That was just an extra branch. You can try to leave the loop intact. Most times you can. If, if you need a little more stretch, you can cut that posterior limb of the loop but I've not had to do that yet on any of these I've done. Uh, you're seeing some twitching of the uh, strap muscles. Again, confirming there is that's ANSA. And there is a common branch uh, or a common trunk that then leads to branches that go to the uh, sternohyoid and the uh, sternothyroid muscle. And that's typically a really nice size match where that common branch is. Here you're seeing that lifting up and then it going into branching to two points. So we'll use the common branch today. There's our IJ. Now we're switching over, trying to find uh, the recurrent lurgy nerve here. And I usually, I, I go in a, a lateral plane. I do like to uh, uh, pull the strap muscles over. And I have a hook. I'm rotating the, uh, the thyroid cartilage over as well. And then we start uh, looking for the nerve, um, dissecting out uh, uh, strap muscles and finding where the thyroid gland is. Occasionally you have to take the superior pole of the thyroid gland and just pull it inferiorly to get it out of the way to better find the nerve. Other times you can just pull down on the thyroid gland. Here's the nerve now. We're uh, 
uh, you can find your um, cricopharyngeal uh, muscle or, as well, and that helps to show where the nerve is, as well as, of course, the joint, the uh, um, cricothyroid joint, and just posterior to the joints is where this is going in. I'm cutting uh, uh, this, a strap muscle, just trying to connect my, or have a place to connect my nerve with um, the ansa, so it'll be a little bit easier to suture it all. I follow the nerve quite a ways down. I mean, you can uh, 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 plug it in close to the joint. A lot of people describe that, but I, just to be safe, I take a lot of extra nerve here and then we transect it uh, lower. There's our inferior thyroid artery too, the nerve going over the top of that. We're spreading this recurrent lunge nerve carefully and then transecting it low. Again, we will be cutting more of this nerve away uh, before we suture it to make it a bit shorter because that will help it re a bit faster. But you can also keep it long. You definitely don't want any tension. Here's our ansa cervicalis. We're back to the ansa. There's the branch and the common trunk, and I'm cutting it right where it branches into those two branches at the base of the common trunk of the ansa cervicalis. So there that sits. And we swing it on over. Again, you can see the IJ clearly there, and here you can see that we have a lot of excess nerve, which is very nice. So we can. Uh, showing the answer there and then showing the recurrent uh, next to it here. Again, this is a, a little bit of a side view we've been looking at while finding, trying to find the recurrent lesion nerve. So now superior is off to the right. Uh, we place the green background in place. And then, uh, and then, you, and then I typically use a microscope to suture these uh, together. You don't have to. Some people just use their loops. Uh, it seems that, like with these nerve reinnervations, as long as you get the nerves close, they they will uh, reapproximate nicely and, and grow together quite well. So here we're cutting a bit of that recurrent lunge nerve just to make it shorter, so that uh, it will grow. I'm sorry, will reinnervate a bit faster, and you'll have better bulk of the uh, uh, true vocal fold. Again, this does not not allow for movement. Of the tubal fold, which is good bulk. Sometimes you clear off a little bit of the fascia there if there's some excess, but uh, otherwise you don't definitely don't have to clear all the fascia off. Working on the uh, end of that recurrent lunge nerve. So now we transition over to the ansa cervicalis, just freshen up that edge. A nice uh, a transection there. And it's typically a fairly good size match. This one, the recurrent is a bit larger, but it might be just because there's a, a bit more fascia around that. You take your uh, uh, 8-0 suture, typically, 8-0 or 9-0, and then uh, we start um, taking small bites into the uh, epineurium or even into the fascia. As long as you get this, get this into a nice approximation, you really only need two or three sutures. Usually I do three. Here we're, um, we're tying these down and, and uh, clipping the sutures there. So it's a nice position there. And, and then I, I just do a belt and suspenders thing with a collagen tubule called Neuropore tubule. There's other, other types and just lay that uh, in place so that it can, it's not going to grow anywhere else except within that tube. And that's it for the uh, uh, for this portion. We just I usually rinse it out carefully, look for any bleeding vessels, uh, hemostasis at the end, and lay the muscles back over the top. And then uh, I do place a drain in these and suture the edges together, uh, either with monocryl or, or vicryl, uh, 
uh, Vicryl, if you're doing the uh, platysma layer, uh, the, um, typically monocryl can do platys and subcutaneous at the same time, and then dermabond for the skin is what I typically use. And that is it. Thanks for listening.